I have recently had the opportunity to be in some flat earth debates on YouTube and have gotten to know some of the arguments that the globe side has to offer more clearly. I hope that I can now offer some better explanation of some of the differences between both sides of the debate. I do see some things that need to be looked at closer to understand what the globe side is making claims about. In this video, I want to make some points about the stars, their rotation in the sky, and also some claims being used to debate that the Earth is a globe that I see to be untrue. So this video will be about equatorial mounts for telescopes, um, the North Star, and the southern center of rotation of the stars. The globe side of the debate has no problem acknowledging that from the Earth, the stars and sun and moon and sky appear to be moving over the Earth, turning in a perfect circle around the North Star Polaris. Another part of the debate is that if Earth is flat, they say that an equatorial mount would not work to track the lights in the sky and that a flat Earth would require a mount that is using more than one axis of rotation. Here is Red's rhetoric explaining this part of the debate on Fight the Flat Earth's channel, who was kind enough to invite me to debate there. Okay. So basically the glow proof is base is going to be what it was last time. I'm going to start with an equatorial telescope mount. Okay. If you are trying to get long exposure shots of, you know, nebulae or the stars or whatever, you want to use an equatorial mount. An equatorial mount is great because it corrects for field rotation by only having to rotate one axis. However, in order for that to work, you need to align that axis with the axis of the Earth. And guess what? The angle at which you need to align that axis is dependent on how, on how far north you are or how far south you are. If you were to go all the way to the North Pole, you would have to stand the equatorial telescope mount's axis straight up. In order for it to work at the equator, you would have to lay it side to side so that the axis is running along the ground. Now, if you know the distance and the angle at which you need to turn, you would see that it actually gives you a really good value for not only the shape of the Earth, which is round, but also the size of the round Earth. If you were to model an equatorial telescope mount uh, working on a globe, it works perfectly. It only has to rotate one axis in order to stay focused on stars. However, if you try to model that same equatorial telescope mount moving on a flat earth to track any object in the sky, whether it's attached to a dome or not, that I might add, it will have to move both axes that that telescope mount has available to it. It, it, it is impossible to keep anything in the view of that telescope while rotating only one axis axis this is this is something that literally anyone can do if you have an equatorial telescope mount and if you're willing to travel notice in the animation that reds was playing that it showed the equatorial mounted telescope moving to the bottom of the globe to antarctica is antarctica an island like this animation shows well let me say this if google earth was accurate and if Antarctica is a place as depicted on Google Earth and in Red's animation, then why does it look like this at the South Pole? If Antarctica was an actual island and there was an actual South Pole or a southern axis of rotation of the Earth, we would not be limited to sewn together images of this place. I live in Minnesota, so my the equatorial mount has to be pointed at Polaris, which only makes sense, which is the center of the rotation of the sky. Where I live, it is about 45 degrees. If I was to travel north, Polaris would appear to get higher in the sky, and if I travel south, it would appear to get lower in the sky until I reached the equator and it would be about at the horizon. I agree with Reds on these points. 
but I didn't think that I had to explain why Polaris is at different angles from different locations. If you roll a bowling ball on the ground, it will appear to go up towards the horizon until its angular size is too small or it goes behind something that blocks it. The sky is just the opposite way. If a jet is flying away from you, it will appear to go down towards the horizon until its angular size is too small or something blocks it. Nothing about this says anything about the radius of the Earth. That is a circular assumption that you're making. Next, I do use an equatorial mount with one axis pointed at Polaris. The stars do a circle around Polaris every day, every 24 hours. So this is just simple geometry. I can track any star in the night sky by pointing the base of my equatorial mount at Polaris. This is because anyone that can see Polaris can do the same. Here are star trails from Florida taken by Nathan Thompson. In Georgia, the star is always visible through this hole in the Georgia Guidestones. This is also by Nathan Thompson. And here are star trails taken from Minnesota by me. It works this way, anywhere you can see Polaris from. So you only need one axis. Reds was showing some footage of Astronomy Live's telescope on an equatorial mount following the stars to do a long exposure image. And it was only on one axis. Well, that's exactly what I do here in Minnesota. That is because geometrically, every star is doing a circle around Polaris. A circle is a shape consisting of all points in a plane that are at a given distance from a given point, which is the center. And in this real life application, we are using Polaris to be the center of the stars and they are in motion around Polaris in a circle orbit. So with all the talk about the motion of the stars, why does Red say that the stars are not moving and that is the Earth that is moving? That's why I'm saying that it's circular. And the stars go in circles. Hmm. I have this. Change. I have this thing. They're called standards, and unfortunately, the Bible does not meet them. And what about what about observations that you have a P one thousand? Take your P one thousand and put it on the star trail thing, and put it outside, and tell me if if the stars were moving or if your camera was moving. Again, if it, we were to look <laughs> at the at, at the sky on a merry-go-round i would see the same exact effect but how that, about just uh, but, just but in, in reality that, with your camera but in that forget time the -around part. no 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 no. i'm not going to forget the merry-go-round part because it's an example of what we are seeing just because the stars of, of rotate like around a celestial point that doesn't mean we are still okay right and, and that's an opinion no, that's a that's a statement of fact. That's something that we can it, demonstrate by simply going to the park and finding a merry-go-round merry and testing it for ourselves. Well, yeah, we can do a merry-go-round game, but we're not on a merry-go-round. No, get but, what I'm saying? This, we're but on exactly Earth and like a merry-go-round. Every, uh, every perception that and sense that your body has tells you that it is completely stationary and solid as a rock like it always has been. And what I, I'm not trying to argue with your point because you have the, the your gyroscope and you have uh, the other things that you brought up that the you, sensory your measurements. perception is perception isn't perfect. Sensory perception is flawed. You make you well, make flawed judgments based that. on your perception constantly. So it is foolish to rely on them to that degree. OK, and then I'll I'll be done with this conversation or not this conversation, but this part of the. Uh,
question or the conversation or whatever by mm. just saying this that you're able to ignore the sky turning above your head because you have a concept idea that it's the ground is turning that's every example that i gave included the sky turning i'm not ignoring it you're just not accepting my answer no i'm accepting your answer i'm not saying that you're wrong or something i'm saying that you are able to ignore your own flawed perceptions in order to so because i that's have what more I'm, that's accurate all equipment i can rely on and Absolutely. that's actually exactly what i'm pointing out is that you think you're relying on the equipment rather than your your actual senses that you make i am not going to rely on my i'm not going to rely on my senses when driving i'm going to i'm going to look at the speedometer yeah no and that's more accurate i agree but when when we're looking at I, the reason why i have this image playing behind me is because that's the point i'm making is that anybody that is is trying to say that this is not the stars turning they're not paying attention to where they live is that's what i'm saying we live on a place that has a sky above it turning everybody does we all no, live that, here that is that is your assertion and your assertion is based on a fundamentally flawed concept the concept is deemed flawed not by me not by so flawed not, not by not so by flawed, fight the flat it's or anybody it's it's <laughs> deemed demonstrably false by the measurements that we have been able to gather and I, I, I just would have to disagree with the measurements. You can disagree with the measurements all, all you want. The point is that the measurements exist. The measurements exist. And so if you ask any reasonable person, we say, hey, we have a guy who hasn't done any measurements, but trust me. No, I'm doing a measurement right now. Is flawed. And we have this, this other guy who doesn't go that far, but trust the tools and equipment that are used in planes and stuff like that. Who are Reds. you going to believe? Reds. This is a measurement or an observation. Okay. It's a simple one. The sky's turning above my camera. Simple. It's an observation That's, that doesn't prove your point though. Well, it 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 says what I'm trying to say about the sky no, it, moving it, it fall, and the earth short. being stationary. No, it That's falls fine. short of what you want it to it, what you want it to prove <clears throat> and what it's actually showing are two different things. What you're trying in your to say, opinion. no, in actual yeah. demonstrable reality. You what is don't... this? What is this doing in the background? That's the point I'm making. The sky's turning in the image that my camera takes, and I have side reel motors on my telescope because the sky's turning, and my telescope is set on the ground that's not turning. That's no. the whole point I'm making. No, the, no, the sky, the sky could be stationary, and the Earth could be turning with your camera still attached to the earth and it would still yeah. make that view but why would you choose that if the reality is that the camera is not moving like i mean because if, if the you, reality because in go, reality go put we something have in the backyard that and the camera you, is moving in reality we have measurements to show that the camera is moving and i choose not to ignore parts of reality that are inconvenient to the you're gonna to the you're gonna ignore you're going to ignore the sky turning above your camera just so that you can say, oh, I'm intellectually uh, have better information than that. So, and, and you're saying not once did I ignore your image. Not well, once you're I, able it, to say that you don't live on the earth or what? I don't get no, it. No, no, I didn't. I'm not. Now you're just putting words in my mouth. I said your image does not demonstrate what you want it to demonstrate you're saying if you're saying i'm ignoring your image then i'm saying you're ignoring the physical evidence the physical measurements that we have done in reality that you yourself occupy that shows that we are the ones actually rotating not the sky and i don't i don't think that there those are precise ways to measure certain things you have a better like, uh, way of doing it i'm all ears Sorry, yeah, it's I'm not sitting, a, it's not a I'm sitting in this room right now saying. that's not moving. That's the whole point I'm making. The sky's turning above my house right now. That's There's stars. They are moving above um, my house right now. I'm, so I'm basically sorry, but your, I kind of have to approach, show what a measurement is, right? Wait, wait, wait. So, so your approach to the ring laser gyro, the weighted scales, the pendulum is look at this, look at this video and take my word for it. Got it.
Well, let me give you, well, it's not my word for it. It's your no, word. No, because it's, it's everybody's you're me word. nothing else. No, it's everybody's word for it. Everybody knows that stars move. The constellations move in the night sky. Everybody knows that. Or so it's the not my Earth word. It's rotating. something that we observe. Or the Everybody Earth could be rotating. It. What's that? Or the Earth could be rotating. No, I agree. It could be. It could be rotating or it could be the sky rotating. And so, what, point so, I'm so making, what are we even talking about here then? The point I'm making is that we live on the Earth and we've taken in somehow we try to pretend that we're up there looking down on the Earth and we can see all this solar system and all this stuff when we don't see the planets orbiting the sun. We don't see that. We see the sun going over our heads every day and the moon going over our heads every day and we see the planets doing retrograde motion up in the sky. Red says that the earth is rotating and the sky is stationary. Then he says that the rotation of the sky proves something about the shape of the earth because a kind of telescope mount I use all the time won't be able to work on a flat earth to track the stars. Then he shows a video from Astronomy Live of a scope on an equatorial mount with one axis tracking the motion of the stars. I do it all the time and it's my favorite type of mount to track stars with. Only one axis of rotation. One motor. Which again, why does Reds think I would need a motor on my telescope if the sky is stationary. Earth is not moving at all, and everyone living on it witnesses and observes this every day. It shouldn't even be a debate. The idea that there's a solar system is exactly what I just said. It's an idea. It only exists in our minds. In reality, we see the lights in the sky Sun, moon, stars, planets, and now the ISS, and we see them moving over the face of the earth, up in the sky, above our heads. And everything I said in this video about the North Star and the equatorial mount and one axis and how it works just fine applies exactly the same way in the south, but the center of rotation will have to be south and the opposite direction because you'll be facing the opposite direction to see the center of rotation. The North Star will be too far away and hidden by the horizon. 